In this tutorial, we're going to cover the text wrap library in Python. The text wrap library is used to format and perform various operations on text, or more specifically, it's used to format a lot of text, multi-line text usually. We don't use this, you know, like string formatting or, or anything. This is for when we have a lot of text, we have multiple lines of text, and we want to display it in a presentable format. Okay, it's mostly to do with alignment, uh, indentation, or de-indentation if you want to, as well as shortening paragraphs and making placeholders if the text is overflowing and a bunch of cool stuff like this that you may want to use when maybe displaying text in a console window, displaying text in a message prompt or a GUI window. So it's pretty useful, okay? And it's within the standard library, so we don't need to download it separately. We can just go ahead and import it right away, okay? So this is some text here that we're gonna be using. So let's take a look at what we can do with this text and how we can change it and manipulate it. Okay, so the first thing I wanna take a look at is the fill function. The fill function is like the main function within the text wrap module. It has like 10 different options that you can take a look at that you can use to change the text, to change the way it appears. Okay, so let's create a new variable here called new text and make it equal to text wrap dot fill okay and let's start slow we'll just start with some basic options first okay let's pass in the my text variable okay this is a multi-line string by the way whenever you're representing multiple lines of text in python you need to use multi-line strings okay triple quotes remember that okay you can't use single line strings okay that won't work so let's take a look at the width parameter first this is pretty simple what it does is it defines the length of each line Okay, it defines uh, the number of characters. So if you pass in 50, then each line will only be 50 characters long. Okay, and this makes the lines more uniform because right now it's all jagged because there's, you know, there's one sentence roughly on each line, I think, yeah? And you want to basically reformat this so it's all in one continuous paragraph, okay? Because it doesn't look natural. So I'm gonna put in 70 in here and we'll print out this new variable and let's see what our text looks like. All right, so here's our output. As you can see, it's all continuous now and the lines have been adjusted so that each each line, all right, and by, by each line, I mean each line over here, okay? I don't mean each sentence, okay? There's a difference. So this is one sentence and this is one line, okay? So each line over here is taking full advantage of the 70 character limit, but do notice that it's not breaking up the word, okay? For example, uh, this is just a, the lorem ipsum text, so it doesn't make sense. I mean, it doesn't make sense in English, uh, but if you look at this word elit over here and then this torture, so the reason why torture can't appear over here is that there's a 70 character limit, but what it's gonna do is the default nature is to shift this word onto the next line rather than break it up and maybe put three characters on the first line and three characters on the next, okay? So that's the default nature, okay? Because it would look kind of weird, right? If you had three characters uh, up here, like T-O-R over here and then T-O-R down there. So yeah, this is just something I want you to notice, okay? So what other options do we have? Well, we have the max lines option, okay? So if I want just five lines to appear. The useful when you're trying to show summarized version of the text, like a preview. So look over here. What it did is that it only shows us five lines and then it includes this placeholder over here to kind of show that there's more text but it's not being shown right now, okay? And related to this, there's another par parameter that we can take a look at, placeholder. You can change it from the default, which is this. You can change it to something else, like just, just three dots without the, uh, without the brackets. So if I do this, then there you go. Okay, let's leave a space in there. I think it'll look better that way. Okay, that looks, okay, let's add one more dot. I think that'll complete the look. Okay, so yeah, so this is basically how it's done. Okay, we just format the text, it looks better. We created a simplified version, okay? And yeah, or let's go with something else, read more. This is something I think we all see in articles online. And you know, just a couple of dots. 
I want you to actually notice something because it's going to remove that word. Yeah. Uh, look over here. Over here, there's that word UT. Okay. And then the triple dots. But as we increase the size of the placeholder, it actually removed that word. And the reason for that is because the placeholder also counts towards the 70 character limit inside each line. The next function is wrap. Okay. And this is actually the same thing as fill. It's the same thing. But the only difference is, is that it returns a list of the sentences. It doesn't return a multi-line string. Okay. For example, I'll just keep everything the same. And what I'll do is just print it out, but with a wrap instead. So let's see what happens. See, it's a list and each element inside this list is one line. Okay. So maybe you prefer it this way, maybe. So then you can use this. Otherwise you can use fill. And let me just show you this, uh, for a line in, uh, new text print line. And this will give us the same output that we get with fill. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's take a look at some other functions. Okay, something that's not wrap and fill. Um, let's take a look at indent. Okay, and let's just, um, okay, let's keep this text. It's fine. Let's just tone it down a bit. All right. All right, so I'm gonna indent this text. Okay. And see what nice, if you're using an ID like VS code, it shows all these options here. So I'm going to use, uh, my text here as a string parameter and then the prefix. Okay. We need to add in a prefix. So this is a string by the way. So if I want to maybe indent everything by three spaces, I'll leave three spaces, one, two, three, and let's print this out. Oh, wait, hold on. Print a new text. And this should indent everything by three spaces. See, everything has been indented by three spaces. Pretty cool. So we can also do other stuff like this. Indent everything with an arrow. Okay. Or even leave a space after the arrow. We can do all that. While we're on the topic, I completely forgot about something. There was something I wanted to tell you guys that the fill. Okay. There's one parameter that I wanted to share is this initial indent. Initial indent indents only the first line. Okay. Cause you know, those paragraphs, sometimes the first line has like three or four characters of spacing. So this is for that kind of effect. So if I do this and let me just define the width back to 70. And if I do this there, the first line has some indenting now. Okay. As defined by this parameter and the rest of the lines don't. So this is pretty interesting and you know, uh, this gives a very paragraph like look. So yeah, just wanted to share that. And in contrast to the indent function, there's also the dedent function. The dedent function, um, is the, re the reverse obviously. Now, for example, a lot, of, a lot of people make this mistake, but they make the multi-line strings like this. Okay. Now this is, this is a normal. Okay. And the problem is with this is that there's this is actually going to add this indent space. Okay. This indent that you see here, it's actually going to add it to the string. Okay. So let me just run this function and print out the old text just so you can see what it looks like. And, oh, wait, my text. Let's print that out. Okay. So this is um, our output here. You can see that this is currently unchanged. Okay. Let me explain the reason for that. The dedent function, it doesn't remove all indentation. It removes the common indentation. Okay. So for example, um, the first line, actually that's very important. The indentation on the first line, if there's zero indentation on the first line, it won't do anything. Okay. The entire point of the indent function, the, sorry, the dedent function is to remove any white space before the first line. Okay. Let's say that there are five characters of white space before the first line. It'll remove those five characters from the first line and then it'll remove those five characters from all the, you know, succeeding lines. So that's basically the common leading white space. Okay. So currently nothing's changing because the first line has zero, uh, 
you know, zero white space. But if I change it to this, okay, then you'll notice that there you go. Okay, look over here. Uh, as you can see, there's like all this white space over here. And when we use the lead end function, it removed this common white space and then removed the exact same amount from the others, from the other two lines. Now, if I do this, uh, yeah, if I do this, can you guess what happens? Well, let me run this and you'll see here is that it just removed this much. Okay, uh, let's say that this is 10 characters. Let's say this is 10 characters of white space, okay? And this is uh, 20. Okay, 15, 15. So what it did was remove 10 characters from this 15. So now there's only five left. That's basically how the deed, deed end function works. Okay, it can be useful in certain scenarios. That's up to you on how you want to use it. And there's just one more thing we need to cover and then we're done with this. This isn't even a new feature, really. It's more like an alternative way of doing things that makes life easier. Okay, so let's discuss that. Okay, so before we move on, there's one thing I forgot to mention, one function that I forgot to cover. So let me just, you know, do that very briefly. Okay, so for example, if you just want to perform the shorten operation, okay, if you just want to shorten the text, the same way we were doing it with the placeholder earlier, uh, there's a function for that, a dedicated function. Okay, same thing, same parameters. Let me just show you what it does. So I'll do print text wrap dot shorten. That's the name of the function. Then S2, I'll pass S2 in here. Then um, width, width can be 10. And then a placeholder, a custom placeholder can be something like uh, read more. Okay. Or actually, let's increase the text, the, let's increase the width because the placeholder is going to take some space. So, um, come on. There we go. So that's how you can shorten text without having to use the fill option if you don't want to. Okay, this is also useful for single line sentences. All right. Anyways, so let's move on to that last thing I was talking about. Now, uh, the text wrap module gives us what we call the text wrapper class. The text wrapper class can produce a text wrapper object that you can use repeatedly. You can use that repeatedly uh, in a very easy manner. Because when you want to shorten some, some text or use the fill function, you need to define five or six parameters along with it, usually. Okay, but what if you don't want to do that? You, want, you don't want to have to type that out again and again. Let me show you that. For example, if we want to use the fill function, okay, and I want to make the width 10, then I want to maybe add in some initial indentation, and I want to maybe, I can't use max lines here because there's just, you know, one line. Um, is there anything else I can use? Uh, placeholder, placeholder, of course. So, uh, read more. And again, we'll just increase this a bit to 15. All right, so what I want to do is show you how to basically shorten this process. Because if you wanted to do this twice, you would do it like this, right? You would um, have S1 and S2 over there and you would do it like this, okay? You're using the same parameters, but you, you just need to write out all of that stuff again, okay? And I know you can just copy paste it, but it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good that they're copy pasting so much code. Okay, that's not good practice. Okay, and there's our output. And it's splitting it across several lines. Yeah, that's what fill does. So yeah, I guess it is different from the shortened function. And actually the placeholder option won't show up unless we uh, add in the max lines parameter. Okay, anyways. What I want to actually uh, explain here is how we can shorten this code, okay? Instead of having to write all this uh, multiple times, let's just write it once, and then we can use that object everywhere else. All you need to do is create a wrapper object, call it whatever, and then just do text wrap dot text wrapper, and then define all these options. So just copy paste this, put it in here, okay? And now just do wrapper dot fill S1, Okay, wrapper.fill s2. And this has the exact same effect. 
you can now use this wrapper object and do this very easily to a number of objects. Okay, saves, it saves you some time. Um, let me just print those out just so we can see that everything is working as planned. And there. Okay, there's our output. So this is also useful if you want to have multiple types of wrapping, okay? Like you want to create one wrapper which maybe has a width of 10 and you know some different placeholders, some different indentation options. Then you want to create another wrapper that has a bunch of different options. So you can create three or four wrappers like this, then use whichever one you want to. So it's just define it once, then you can use it as many times as you want to later without having to write out a bunch of code. Okay, so yeah, this is the end of our text wrap module tutorial. And we covered pretty much every option and fine, not every option, but we covered every function. Okay, there's still some extra options that you can take a look at. I'll leave a link to my website. You can check it out over there. There's like 10, 12 different options for some functions. Actually just Phil, only Phil has that many options. So yeah, go check that out and do leave a like, leave some comments, let me know what you wanna see in the future and do subscribe to the channel so you stay notified. And I guess I'll see you guys in a later video.